I'd like to call to order the January 14, 2000 meeting. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Virginia Beach Planning Commission. My name is Jeff Hodson, and I'm the chairman of the commission. Today should prove exciting for everybody. We have a new chairman, a new vice chairman, a new secretary, and two new commissioners. So there's no telling what you may end up with today for some of the meeting. Um, so before we get started, we definitely need to be led in a prayer. And I have asked Ed Whedon to please lead us in that prayer. This will be followed by the pledge led by Ron Ripley. Please stand. Let us pray. Oh, merciful God in heaven, we give you praise, glory, and honor today, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, for bringing us into the new year, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the weather that we're receiving, Lord, to help things grow, Lord, and saturate our skies and our ground. We ask you, Lord, to come, come into this meeting today, Lord God, and bless all the members that are here, those that are, that are, those that are here, the people that are here, and those on the way. We ask you just to take control, Lord, and make the right decisions for the city, so we may give you all the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Place the flag, please, and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Whedon, for the prayer, and thank you for the pledge, Mr. Ripley. I uh, next ask Commissioner Phil Russo to please introduce the members. Thank you, Mr. Hodson. Seated uh, all the way uh, to my right is our city attorney, Bill McCauley. Uh, seated next to uh, Bill to his left, and uh, we welcome today for his uh, first time is Jack Wall. Uh, Jack uh, represents the Rose Hall District and is a civil engineer. Uh, we also uh, welcome Dr. Uh, Karen Beardsley uh, Kwasney um, to the commission. She is seated uh, to the left of Jack. Uh, Dr. Karen is a professor of literature and cultural studies uh, at St. Leo's and she represents the Princess Anne District. Seated next to um, Karen is Dee Oliver. Uh, Dee is an at-large member of the commission, and she is a funeral director. Uh, next to Dee is Ron Ripley. Uh, Ron is in real estate management and development, and he is an at-large member of the commission. My name is Phil Russo. I'm also an at-large member of the commission, and I'm an attorney. And um, I stepped outside the uh, meeting one time and got voted uh, as secretary. <laughs> of, um, Seated uh, next to me is our uh, chairman, Jeff Hodson. Uh, Jeff is in real estate management, and he represents the Beach District. Uh, to Jeff's uh, left is Bob Thornton. Uh, Bob is vice chairman of the commission. He is in commercial real estate sales, leasing, and development, and he represents the Lynn Haven District. Next to Bob is Jan Rosinski. Uh, Jan is a property manager. Uh, and she represents the Centerville District. Uh, Mike Inman is to Jan's. Okay. Uh, Mike Inman is to Jan's left. Um, Mike is an attorney, and he is an at-large member of the commission. Next to Mike is uh, David Weiner. Uh, David is in commercial sales, and he represents the Kempsville District. Um, and then seated next to David is Ross Brockwell. Uh, Ross is a structural engineer, and he uh, represents the Bayside District of the Commission. Uh, normally, uh, Jack Whitney, the Director of Planning, is uh, present, but uh, today we have Karen Lasley. And uh, Ms. Lasley, if you would um, introduce the uh, staff members who are present. Thank you. And Jack should be joining us momentarily in the meantime. I'll introduce the staff. We have Jack, we or, excuse me, Ed Whedon to my immediate left, our administrative assistant, whom you've already met. The staff is still a little bit scattered and finishing up some loose ends, but with us right at the moment is Kevin Kemp in the first row and Graham Owen in the second row, who have worked on your agenda today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Russo, for the introductions and Ms. Lasley for the staff introductions. I'd also like to say welcome to our Two new planning commissioners, um, welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. I am um, dedicating the next four years of your lives to the planning commission. 
I assume they, they told you it was four years. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to quickly find that the city of Virginia Beach has an incredibly talented planning department led by an equally talented planning director that makes our jobs up here very easy. So um, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, next order of business is the explanation of the rules to run the meeting. I've asked Commissioner Jan Rosinski to please review these rules. Thank you. The Virginia Beach Planning Commission takes pride in being fair and courteous to all parties in attendance. It is important that all involved understand how the commission normally operates and conducts its meeting. It is equally important that everyone treat each other and the members of the commission with respect and civility. The commission requests that if you have a cell phone, please either silence or turn it off at this time. This is an abbreviated explanation of the rules. The complete set of the rules is located in the front of the planning agenda packet. Following is the order of business for this public hearing. Withdrawals and deferrals. <clears throat> the chairman will ask if there are any requests to be withdrawn or deferred of any item on the agenda. Consideration of these requests will be made first. Consent agenda is the second order of business. It's the consideration of the consent agenda items, which are those items which the Planning Commission believes are unopposed and have favorable staff recommendation. Then the regular agenda. The Commission will proceed to the remaining items on the agenda today. Please note that the actions taken by the Commission today are in the form of a recommendation to the Virginia Beach City Council. The final decision for approval or disapproval of an application will be made by City Council. The Commission thanks you for your attendance, and we hope that your experience here today leaves you feeling that you've been heard and treated fairly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rosinski. The first order of business is to address those items to be withdrawn or deferred. Please come forward if you have an item to be withdrawn or deferred. It's been brought to the Chair's attention that item D2 has requested deferral. Is there any opposition to this matter being deferred? That is the only item. Uh, do I have a motion on the deferred item? D2. Item D2. I have a uh, motion by Commissioner Thornton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rosinski. Mr. Reedon, we're now ready to vote. Vote is open. I vote 11 to 0. The Commission has deferred item D2. The next items we will address are those that are placed on the consent agenda. The Vice Chair will handle this portion of the agenda. Uh, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman. This afternoon we have 13 items on the consent agenda. Uh, the first matter is item number one. This is an application from Take 5 Oil Change, LLC. Uh, is there a representative here from, uh, for that case? Uh, would you please step forward? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Or oh, good afternoon, rather. Uh, please state your name for the record. Uh, Sharon Hole. Uh, the conditions that you've reviewed with the staff, are they acceptable? Yes, they are. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, is there any opposition in this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner uh, David Weiner to review this matter. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. The applicant requests a conditionally, conditionally use permit to allow the site to be developed into an automotive repair facility. A, a conditionally used permit for gasoline sales was approved by City Council in 1978. A second conditionally used permit for automobile repair was approved by City Council in 1980. A third conditionally used permit for car wash facility was approved by the City Council in 1982. The site is no longer being used as allowed by all by the three use permits and the building currently located on the site are va is vacant. The building will be removed the buildings on site will be removed and a new building constructed since the applicant's proposal automotive repair use building and site design varies significantly from the plans associated with the prior use permit a new use permit is required the applicant proposes to construct a 1500 square foot oil change facility on the site access to the site will be from two existing curb cuts the submitted building elevations show a one-story building containing three service bays uh, the primary exterior material is proposed to be ephus and brick to run along the base of the building. The front facade incorporates the three garage doors. 
The comprehensive plan designates this area of the city as being in the suburban area. Staff has a, recommends approval and we put it on a consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, the next matter is item number two on your agenda, Pembroke Square Associates, LLC. This is an application of Pembroke Square Associates, LLC for a conditional use permit uh, for an indoor commercial recreation facility on property located at 4554 Virginia Beach Boulevard, District 4 Bayside. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mike Knuckles with Faggart and Frieden representing the applicant. Uh, first, let me apologize for not being available this morning when y'all were discussing this, uh, but um, I just couldn't get here. <coughs> and uh, I understand that uh, uh, with respect to proper or, or condition number three, that the first sentence has been deleted. And with that, <coughs> we are fine with all of the uh, conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, stand by if we have any questions. Is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, the chairman is asked, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Commissioner Ross Brockwell, to read this case. Thanks, Bob. This application is for a conditional use permit uh, to redevelop a, a portion of Pembroke Mall. So this is for an entertainment complex uh, known as Uptown Alley. And this is in the Central Business District uh, across Virginia Beach Boulevard from Town Center and Pembroke Mall. Um, so the intent of the Central Business, business District is to promote five common planning principles, um, of which are the efficient use of land resources, uh, full use of urban services, compatible mix of uses, and a detailed human scale design. So this is going to bring an entertainment complex um, into an existing facility with existing infrastructure. Uh, it's a bowling alley. It's a billiard facility. There's an entertainment area for live music. Uh, there's an arcade area. Um, and it should create about 90 to 100 jobs. Uh, there was a question about the sign that the commission is going to defer to uh, Board of Zoning Appeals on the definition of sign and the applicability to this project. But um, aside from that, there was consensus that this was a great project, so we put it on the consent agenda. The next item is item uh, number, let me make sure I move these around. <clears throat> item number three, this is an application by NVR, Inc. Uh, NVR is applying for a modification of proffers on property located on the east side of Munden Farms Lane and Munden Ridge Drive. District 7, Princess Anne. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman, Chairman Hodgson, Eddie Bernard, Mr. Attorney, representing NVR, Inc., <coughs> Munden Farm, LLC. Uh, we appreciate this item being placed on the consent agenda, and uh, <coughs> thank Carolyn for her uh, hard work on this application. Thank you. Is there any, any, any opposition to this item being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, the chair has asked uh, Commissioner Rosinski to speak on this matter. Thank you, Commissioner Thornton. A conditional change of zoning from AG1 and AG2 uh, architect, uh, agricultural districts in the conditional PDH2 plan development um, was approved by the City Council in 2006. In 2013, City Council approved a modification of the existing building material as the builder developer had changed um, for that proposal. The existing proffer number three states that approximately 2.6 acres or 59.5 percent of the property must be set aside as open space. As the applicant proposed homes are larger than those of the original applicant, slight increase in light in a lot size is necessary which resulted in a reduction in the amount of open space. Specifically, the applicant request will increase the size of 40 of the 71 lots each by an average of one uh, of 1,325 square feet. The dedication for future connectivity to the property to the north uh, in conjunction with the increase caused the reduction in the overall open space to 40.7 acres, hence the need to modify the current zoning agreement. The reduction in open space is uh, 53,000 square feet or 56.8 percent of the site as open space. As noted, the transition area design guidelines recommend that projects strive to achieve a goal of 50% open space, 
the applicant's request to reduce the open space uh, approximately from approximately 46.6 or 42.6 acres to 40.7 acres or, or a 56.78 percent of open space um, this residential development remains consistent with the recommendations of the comprehensive plan the policies for residential development in the area accordingly staff has recommended approval based on the modification of the proffers therefore we've placed this item on the consent agenda thank you uh, the next item for the consent agenda is item number four this is an application from Alexandria Place LLC. It's an application for a conditional change of zoning from A12 apartment to conditional A12, A24 apartment on property located at 5700 Magnolia Chase Way, District 1, Centerville. Afternoon. Steve Davis, Wilcox Savage, Virginia Beach here representing the applicant. We are familiar with the uh, proffers and uh, they are acceptable and we appreciate the good work the staff did on this one Carolyn Smith in particular is a great write-up on why we're having to do this the way we're doing it and we appreciate being placed on the consent agenda thank you mr. Davis uh, is there any application any opposition to this application being placed on the consent agenda a hearing none the Commission the chairman has asked uh, Commissioner Rosinski to review this application thank you uh, this applicant proposes to rezone the existing site, which is zoned A12 apartment district, to conditional A24 of apartment district for the purpose of adding an additional multifamily apartment building to the site. As a 120-foot wide Dominion Virginia Power easement with a high power transition line and towers is located on the northern portion of the property, the land is to be used to calculate the density is reduced from 18.2 acres to 15.38 acres. The apartment complex's stormwater management ponds are also located in this easement. The applicant proposes to add a three-story, 24-unit apartment building to the existing apartment complex. The density resulting from the addition of the 24 units um, is just above the maximal allowed density in the site zoned A12, which is why they're asking for um, the change in zoning. Uh, they could not change it to A18 because that kept them still, the percentage was slightly off. In this case, however, going uh, with adding the building and the 28 parking spaces resulted in a 57% lot coverage. Um, so that's why they have come in with their request to rezone to uh, conditional A24 apartment district. Staff recommends approval of this change of zoning to allow the additional 24 multifamily units within the one building Without the easement on the property, the lot coverage would calculate at 46% below the maximum uh, permitted by not only the A24, but also the A18 district. The request to the A24 of apartment district is solely based on lot coverage and not on density. This combined with the proffered limitations of no more than 209 apartment units on the site, which is far below the 276 units permitted by A18 and A24, apartment districts respectively lead staff to find the applicant's request for the change of zoning to be conditional to the A24 to be appropriate. Based on this information and write-up, uh, we have found uh, that this item should be placed on the consent agenda. Thank you, Jan. The next item for the consent agenda is item number six. This is the, an application from the City of Virginia Beach. It's an ordinance to amend sections 111, 230, 901, and 1001 of the city zoning ordinance and section 5.2 of the Oceanfront Resort District Form-Based Code by defining the term craft distillery and establishing craft distilleries as a conditional use in the B2 Community District, in the B3 Central District, and the B4C Central Business Mixed District, the I-1 Light Industrial District, and the OR Ocean Resort District and setting forth required standards for such use and allowing craft breweries in the B3 Central District, the B4C Central Business District, uh, mixed use, and the I-1 Light Industrial District and the OR Oceanfront <coughs> Resort District. Uh, uh, Graham with the staff is going to speak to this matter. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Um, staff had received a request 
a couple of months ago to allow this use uh, due to a change uh, in the code of Virginia which permits distilleries that meet very specific criteria uh, to apply for distillery store uh, licenses with the ABC uh, which allows them essentially to uh, build a retail component onto an existing distillery. Uh, so distilleries may con uh, conduct controlled tastings uh, with permission from ABC. Um, so this uh, this distillery use is already permitted in the CBC, the Central Business Core District, uh, which encompasses Town Center, um, although the use is never defined in the zoning ordinance. Uh, so this amendment would add a definition uh, to, uh, for the craft distilleries as a facility that produces and distributes spirits as defined by the ABC Act in quantities not exceeding 5,000 barrels per year and in which such spirits uh, produced at such facility are served to customers for on-premises or off-premises consumption and in which food uh, may be served. Uh, the amendment also redefines craft breweries to allow for food to be served uh, on the premises of a brewery, uh, and also very specifically uh, clarifies that uh, beverages may be produced for off-premises off consumption at a, at a brewery. So I, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Them. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, the next item, item number seven, is Chesapeake Bay Distillery, an application by Chesapeake Bay Distillery LLC for a conditional use permit <coughs> as a craft distillery on property located at 437 Virginia Beach Boulevard, District 6 Beach. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, Chairman Hodgson, Eddie Berdon, Chief Attorney representing Chesapeake Bay Distillery. Mr. Chris Richardson is here um, this afternoon. I wanted to take a second um, at Chris's behest to thank uh, Chairman or <clears throat> Plan Director Jack Whitney, Karen Lasley, Graham, and the rest of the staff for all the work on this uh, ordinance change and this uh, use permit. Uh, also, I want to thank the Resort Beach Civic League, who my client has worked closely with for a number of uh, many, many weeks and all the conditions that are recommended uh, with this use permit application by staff are acceptable to us and appreciate being on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? I, would I wish to speak on this matter. I'm not in opposition, so I would like to make some remarks. Um, we'll need to pull this and we'll call you back up uh, you. after the consent agenda. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we were, uh, D. Oliver was going to speak to this matter. Is it appropriate to, to do that now and then bring it back? Or? Summarize it now. Are we going to? Mr. Berdon, would yeah. you mind that when, we, when we hear this, just giving a quick summary? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, next item on the consent agenda is item number eight, Richard and Judy Foster. <laughs> This is an application of uh, Richard and Judy Foster for a variance to the subdivision regulations on a property located at 3344 Eagles Nest Point, District 5, Lynn Haven. Thank you, Mr. Thornton, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, new members. Congratulations. Hope you like it at the end of the day as much as you do at the beginning of the day. <laughs> I think you will. Um, uh, for the record, my name is R.J. Nutter. I'm an, app I'm an attorney representing the applicant, the Fosters, in this case. We appreciate being placed on the consent agenda. Uh, uh, no opposition that we're aware of. We've complied with the Chesapeake Bay Board on all the conditions. So <laughs> the conditions are perfectly acceptable, and we appreciate it. And uh, let me also say I'd, I'd also like to thank Bill McCauley and uh, Karen and Jack and his staff on the distillery ordinance. They were very helpful in working with us um, on to, to get to the right criteria to make that work at the, the Cavalier and and still comply with state law. So we really do appreciate it. And also let you know the Fosters don't intend to have a distillery that's <laughs> only applies to the uh, the Cavalier, my remarks in that regard. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your time and effort as always. Thank you. Uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner Mike Inman to review this matter. This application by Richard and Judy Foster um, is for a subdivision variance. Sites currently consist of two lots that were platted in 1973 as part of a five-lot subdivision. Uh, the lot one was 1.21 acres, lot two was 2.66 acres. They now desire to subdivide the two lots for the purpose of creating a third lot. 
However, this creation will create an, uh, one new lot that does not meet the minimum width requirement for R40 residential uh, district. Uh, to provide access, direct access on Eagle's Nest Point for the new lot, 40 feet have to be equally divided between the new lot and existing lot, which will reduce the lot width. So therefore, we have to have the, uh, the variance. <clears throat> the um, subject site is zone R40. Uh, the site is uh, 3.87 acres, and the majority of it is outside water, marsh, and wetlands. Based on the size of the site, four lots would be possible. However, the configuration of the site makes compliance with applicable development ordinances uh, impossible. Subject site is deep, wide at the rear, and narrow in the front, and is affected by the resource protection area. Staff finds these limiting factors demonstrate a level of hardship sufficient to justify a variance allowing the development at the site with three lots. Moreover, the staff finds that the uh, granting of the variance will not result in a substantial detriment to the adjacent properties and will not adversely affect the character of the neighborhood. Upon discussion in uh, our informal session, we agree with that uh, analysis, and uh, there are several conditions, um, one of which is that numerous conditions that uh, were placed on the property by the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Area Board will, are incorporated. Uh, and the site plan that was or submitted, the subdivision plat, will ha have to be adhered to. And this was decided to be placed upon the consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the consent agenda is item number nine. This is an application of Trinity Church for a conditional use permit, uh, religious use for uh, greater than 4,000 square feet on a property located at 2121 Landstown Road in District 7, Princess Anne. Mr. Vice Chairman, Chairman. Uh, I'm Steve Davis, Wilcox Savage, Virginia Beach, here on behalf of the applicant uh, as counsel and a proud member of Trinity Church. We're familiar with the uh, conditions and uh, uh, they are acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Uh, hearing none, the chair has asked Commissioner Oliver to review this matter. Thank you. Um, this is in the Princess Anne District, and on February the 14th of 2012, City Council approved a conditional use permit for a recreational facility allowing the use of the site for a YMCA and a 50-meter competition pool. The site is currently being developed and construction of the building has commenced. The YMCA, as permitted by the condition, conditions and restrictions associated with the city sale of the property to the YMCA, has reached an agreement with the applicant to use the facilities for a church worship service, activities, and office space. The subject site is zoned conditional B2 business, which requires a conditional use permit for religious use with a floor area over 4,000 square feet. Therefore, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for religious use. The church pr proposes to use the gymnasium for Sunday morning worship service. <coughs> According to the applicant, up to 500, um, 450 people can safely accommodate in the gymnasium for a worship service. Required parking for a 450-seat religious facility is 90 spaces. There are more than 300 spaces provided. Therefore, even if a worship service had 450 participants on a Sunday morning, there'll be adequate parking available. In addition to use of the gymnasium, the church will use the rooms for activities as well as maintain an office within the building. Um, staff recommends approval for this request um, with one condition below, and um, therefore we've placed it on the uh, consent agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Oliver. The next item on the agenda is item number 10. This is an application of BH investors for a variance to the subdivision, subdivision regulations on property located at 936 Lindsley Drive and between 937 and 945 Covey. Thank you again, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. Chairman, for the record, Eddie Berdom, Chief Attorney representing the applicants. Uh, both Mr. Sykes and Mr. DeFord are here. Um, 
appreciate this item being placed on the consent agenda. All of the conditions as recommended are acceptable to us. And uh, thanks for Dr. White for his uh, work on this as well. <coughs> What, give us one second. We, uh, the, the new vice chairman may have messed up. Oh, okay. Do we have any uh, people here to speak against this? I don't believe no. you. No. Okay, then we're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, mean to, I mean to confuse you. We ha and there has, been, there has been a fair amount of recent discussion with the, uh, uh, the community as well. The applicant sent a letter out to the community, and I passed around a letter of support to you all earlier. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. That's right. Is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, the chair has asked Commissioner Ripley to review this matter. As uh, the chair mentioned, this is a, a parcel of property that fronts on Covey and fronts on Lin Lindsley Drive. It's a rather large piece. It's 71,276 square feet, 1.64 acres. Uh, the applicant wishes to subdivide this into three lots. One of the lots that faces Covey doesn't require a variance, uh, but the lots facing on Lindsay do. Uh, they both all have adequate lot size, uh, 23,677 in one case and 21,637 in the other lot. However, the front footage is not 100 feet wide. One is a little over 10 feet. Uh, short and one's a, a right about 10 feet short of the 100 feet. So 89, 11, and 90.16 respectively. Um, the, it seemed like a logical subdivision. The lots appear to be very similar to the lots in the area. The zoning is uh, is uh, is uh, currently um, R20 across the street is R15. Um, the the uh, staff um, said that they thought this was consistent with the surrounding area, and not ask and would not ask firstly affect the character, and the planning commission concurred and placed it on um, consent. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item number twelve. Uh, this is an application for Own Dang for a conditional use permit for a vocational school on property located at uh, 3420 Holland Road, Suite 101 and Suite 102, District 3, Rose Hall. Is there anyone here to speak on this matter? No one here to speak on the matter. Uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, uh, the chairman has asked Commissioner Inman to review the matter. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. This is a uh, conditional use permit request for a vocational school. It is uh, the, the uh, zoning ordinance addresses the use regulations of the business districts and states that a vocational school, uh, which does not involve the operation of woodwork shops, machine shops, or other similar facilities, requires a conditional use permit. This applicant would like to open a beauty school which will focus on cosmetology, nails, and aesthetics. The program consists of uh, hands-on courses as well as classroom style courses. The school will consist of two instructors and will accommodate up to 20 students. Uh, initially, applicants anticipate a total of 10 students and be open Wednesday through Saturday with reasonable hours. Uh, the site is a uh, located at the corner of Stone Shore Road and Holland Road and has been developed with a 14,000 square foot commercial building, one story in height and has 13 suites. Uh, there's plenty of parking. Uh, the proposed use will be filling one of the uh, existing but vacant suites and the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Consequently, uh, and the conditions are uh, uh, only two. We ask to be put on the consent agenda. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the consent agenda is item number 14. This is the City of Virginia Beach. This is an ordinance to amend section 221 of the City Zoning Ordinance pertaining to the ability of City Council to deviate from the required lot coverage 
and the approval of conditional use permits. Uh, is, uh, I think Stephen White was going to speak to this matter. Do you want to take it for a second? Thank you, Mr. Thornton. I'll take it for a second. Uh, this item is an amendment that's very similar to an amendment you recently passed in Section 107I for uh, rezoning applications. Uh, this is for conditional use permit applications, and it's in Section 221I, and it allows um, a deviation um, based on the reasonableness of the request and consistency with the comprehensive plan, deviations to landscaping, setbacks, height. Um, this amendment will also allow uh, deviation to lot coverage because we found in discussing, to, discussing with developers and potential applicants in various areas of the city that lot coverage is a, another issue that's um, causing problems, especially in strategic growth areas. And so we have um, proposed this amendment to you. Thank you. Uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Thank you. Uh, the next item on the consent agenda is item number D1. This is an application of Gary Dunnington for a conditional use permit motorcycle motor vehicle sales automobile repair garage small engine repair establishment bulk storage on property located on providence road centerville is there someone here to speak on this matter nope nobody to hear speak on the matter uh, is there any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda hearing none the chair is asked Commissioner Rosinski to speak on this. Thank you. The applicant requests a conditional use permit to allow the use of the site for motor vehicle sales, automotive repair garage, small engine repair, and bulk storage. Three buildings are currently on the site, a 920 square foot single story block garage and a 136 square foot stick frame shed were built on the site prior to 1977. It's estimated that the building dated back to the 1950s, but records are unclear exactly when the two initial buildings were erected. Uh, there is a <clears throat> um, square, uh, there's a metal sided buildings and there's 23 parking spaces that were paved and striped. With the exception of the restriping of the parking lot, no other improvements have been made on this site. There are two points of vehicular ingress, egress on Providence Road and the paved parking circulation area on the site connects the two parcels uh, to the south, allowing for pedestrian and vehicle connectivity between these two par parcels. Uh, the building is occupied by the following uses, an antique retail shop, a proposed motor vehicle sales office, small engine repair, an automotive repair, uh, located adjacent to the building, the open lawn has been used for bulk storage. The antique retail shop is the only one uh, use that's allowed by right in the B2 business zone district. The automotive repair is legally non-conforming. The applicant would like to use 380 square feet of the existing building as a motor vehicular sales office and to display up to 10 used vehicles on the site. He has proposed to use the 10 parking spaces that front Providence Road display the vehicles. The, bu building, or the business will primarily be operated by one employee and the proposed hours are Monday through Friday from noon until 6 and Saturday from 10 until 6. A uh, conditional use permit is requested to allow the use of the site for motor sales, an automotive repair garage, a small engine repair established, and bulk storage yard. The site is zoned, like I said, B2 business district. The city zoning ordinance requires a conditional use permit for these um, uses. The site has not been improved. There are many current site standards regarding landscaping, signage, entrance turning radio that have not been met. The property owner has agreed to work with staff to include the use as part of the conditional use permit. For this reason, staff believes it's in the best use of the conditional use permit application process to organize the existing and requested uses and develop primarily one base condition. This will provide a clearer understanding for the site for future reference should redevelopment or a change of use be desired. Uh, after this morning's meeting, there were a couple of changes made to the condition that the metal sign building and the single story block garage shall be painted to accommodate the adjacent structures. 
and within six months of the date of City Council approval, the applicant shall make the improvements included in these conditions. Um, and I understand, I guess, these conditions are acceptable with the applicant. Has somebody talked to the applicant about these changes? I don't see uh, the staff person that was working on this in the audience. Do we need to find that out before we can proceed? Is that Christine Blue? Christine, yes. You need Christine? Is she available? Is she outside the door? She may be discussing this with the applicant as we speak. Christine, the question came up about the condition we were talking about in the informal, about the improvements to the building as far as paint and, and other aesthetics. Did you have a chance to talk to the? Yes, I did. He agreed to paint the metal sided building and the back block building, but he plans on replacing the roof within the year. So he asked to uh, limit the improvements to the facades. Okay, so he's agreed with the, is that what the six, why the six month time frame was put in there? Right, because the auto sales is Typically, the requested CUP for auto sales is contingent to these improvements being made, but he would like to simply infill into that suite so the auto sales could start while he has the six months to paint and restripe. He also mentioned they don't want to restripe, obviously, until they reseal the lot, so they want to wait till the spring to do that. So we gave him six months. We've, is, is the applicant in the audience? She, he and she, the property owners, needed to leave. Um, they were here right before the hearing, uh, and they've agreed to those conditions. Okay, that's what was my question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the last item, number well, D. So, I'm sorry, me. pardon me. So I guess based on the, the, the applicant agreeing to the changes that we discussed in the formal, um, we've placed this item on the consent agenda. Okay, sorry, didn't mean to jump ahead of you. Uh, uh, the next item on the consent agenda is number D3. This is an application of Donald Butcher for a change of zoning from I-1 light industrial to conditional B-2 and a conditional use permit for motor vehicle sales. This property is located at 800 South Military Highway, District 2, Kempsville. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Mr. Chairman, again, for the record, Eddie Burdon, Chief Attorney, representing Mr. Boucher. The um, conditions that were recommended on the use permit um, are all acceptable and I understand that um, we were we were surprised by the um, addition of a condition in the informal book I've talked to my client he has no objection to bringing the uh, freestanding sign and building managed signage into compliance if it is not in compliance with code so the a new condition number two is acceptable and we greatly appreciate being placed on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any opposition to this matter being placed on the consent agenda? Hearing none, the chairman has asked Commissioner David Weiner to review this case. Thank you, Mr. Norton. The applicant would like to use the existing building to make improvements to a property located on 800 South Military Highway to accommodate the sale and the use of automobiles. The city's zoning ordinance recognizes that the use of motor vehicle sales, this use requires a conditional use permit and is allowed only allowed in B2, B3, and B4 business district. Thus, the applicant is requesting a conditional use permit for motor vehicle sales and rezoning I-1 industrial to conditional B-2 business. The site is located on the corner of South Military Highway and Alexandra Avenue. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Saturday from 9 to 8 p.m. and 12 noon to 6 p.m. on Sunday. The comprehensive plan designates the site as a suburban area, suburban focus area 8 military highway corridor. Based on the evaluation of the request, requ request as provided, staff, staff, staff recommends approval for the request. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was the last item on the consent agenda. Uh, I would like to have a motion to approve the following consent agenda item numbers. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number six, Number eight, number nine, number 10, number 12, number 14, number fifth, uh, I'm sorry, number D1 and item D3. 
Motion made by Vice Chairman Thornton. Second. Second by Commissioner Weiner. Is there any abstentions? I thought I heard somebody say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have an abstention. Mm -hmm. I have to abstain from uh, agenda item number two as my firm has a business relationship with the applicant. Thank you. I have to abstain from item number three as I have a connection with the applicant. Oh. I'm going to abstain from item number five. I don't know who it is, who the applicant is or anything about the, the applicant, but I see they've listed Town Bank as they've had some discussions and I serve on one of their we're advisory boards. We're going to hear yeah. five. Yeah, we're going to hear five. Oh, you're going to hear five? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Well, and Mr. Chairman, I have to abstain from item number three. I have a relationship with uh, the applicant and item number nine. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of the church. Thank you. Are there any others? All right, Mr. Whedon, I believe we're ready to vote with abstentions noted uh, by uh, Commissioner Inman on agenda item number two, uh, abstention by Mrs. Kwasney on agenda item number three, and uh, Mr. Thornton would like to abstain from agenda item three and nine. Yeah, save it for later. <laughs> Ready to vote? Voters open? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it worked. Item 11 to 0, the Commission has recommended approving items 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, D1 and D3. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the applicants who had a matter on the consent agenda for attending today's hearing. These items will now be scheduled for hearing on the City Council agenda. Now we will address the five remaining items. Uh, I will ask the Secretary to please call the first item. Uh. first item is uh, the application of Monarch Properties Incorporated uh, requesting a change of zoning in R5D residential district to conditional 01 office district. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the Commission, for the record, Eddie Berdon, attorney representing Monarch Properties, Inc. Um, I do note this ap application was on your consent agenda, so I'll, I will be brief. Um, this is a proposal to rezone a piece of property uh, that is located on the east side of South Rosemont Road, north of Dam Neck Road, that is in a um, ACUS area, uh, zoned R5D. Um, developing it residentially is not com uh, in compliance with the um, ACUS ordinance protecting NES Oceana. They have proposed a rezoning to um, an 01 office district for a one-story office building, uh, one access point on Rosemont Road, uh, and uh, Rick Lohman, um, I asked me to, to indicate that the applicants were aware uh, of the fact that eventually there'll be a median break in Rosemont Road and there will be no median uh, uh, cut for the access, but it's the only way the property can be accessed, so eventually it will likely be a one, uh, a right in, right out only. Uh, the <coughs> parking is, was, and again, Carolyn Smith did an excellent job in her write-up and explaining this to you all this morning, so I don't want to go over a lot of stuff, but um, we have uh, situated this one-story building, which the rear elevation is only 14 feet in height, um, and the parapet up on the uh, front uh, is at 22 feet, 8 inches in height, uh, but is a one-story, modest-sized building, 15 feet setback from the rear property line, 5 feet more than is required. Uh, double row of evergreen, um, shrubs we will uh, modify the proffer before it goes to city council to change the category landscaping to category two or three which will produce um, a double row of evergreens that will grow to a mature height of between 15 and 20 feet in height higher than the building itself uh, <coughs> we are adjacent to residential and that is the, the reason for that uh, the dumpster is located uh, more than 50 feet back from the rear property line uh, in addition to the screening that exists will be will placed here, the dumpster itself will be enclosed and will have landscape screening exterior of that. Uh, it's an office building, not a, not a restaurant. Uh, there, you know, the concerns about smell, I, I think, are, are uh, 
uh, not realistic. Uh, because there's only one way in and one way out, um, we will also agree to limit when the dumpster can be tipped by proffer, uh, but we will need to have the opportunity to do that before business hours because of the, you know, problem dealing with the parking. So we would uh, proffer that it would not occur before 7 in the morning or after 10 in the evening as far as the tipping of the, uh, the dumpster. Uh, there was a concern raised um, in an email about whether we were going to have security cameras. It is not the intent to have security cameras. Uh, however, you know, depending upon this would be a medical facility, if there, if there did need to be because of the maintaining of drugs on, on site or whatever, um, any security cameras will be pointed down uh, on the back of the building so as not to provide any uh, visibility of anyone's you know, home uh, located to the east of the, uh, of the subject property. And uh, it's compatible with uh, the Navy. It's, it's a, a low intensity use, you got industrial across the street, and uh, you know, to develop it residentially wouldn't, would not be uh, consistent with our goals as far as Ocean is concerned, and nor would it be a good, good development when you get down to it. I appreciate your approving this as staff has recommended. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Thank you. Do we have any speakers? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there is a uh, one speaker in opposition, Jason Carlisle. Hello. Hello. Can we go back to that slide that was there just please, a moment ago? Please state your name. Jason Carlisle. Thank you. Sorry about that. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, so my property is right here. That's my house, just adjacent to the please, area. The microphone. My property is adjacent to the build right here, uh, as well as some of the other neighbors I spoke to. So there are some vacation homes there, but a couple renters. So I'm speaking on behalf of the neighborhood in this instance. Uh, the oppositions that we have is that in regards to the category one or category one type shrubbery that was going to be put up. I did hear that there was a amendment to maybe two or three. Our opposition is just hopefully we can get a category three type up, uh, which would include, you know, up to 25, 30 feet to kind of give a break between the harmonious or whatever you guys have in here, harmonious interface between different land uses. I mean, that's a neighborhood. That's a medical facility. I understand the difference there between the two. The, the thing is, though, with the noise, the HVAC system, you know, based off of the plans on where this is, we had concerns about where that was going to be uh, in relation to the building. Is it going to be on top of the building? Is it going to be set further back away from the building so it doesn't come on and off during the evening and during, you know, regular work hours, you know, while we're there trying to get some rest in our homes. The odors, uh, again, I, I heard the concerns from my neighbors about that. Uh, definitely a 50 foot set, 50 foot setback from that line. I guess with the shrubbery around that would help with that. But there was some concerns uh, in my neighborhood in regards to that. And the artificial lighting as well. Even though it isn't direct lighting into the neighborhood, like a spotlight, it's still, it's like having a, a light just outside of your window, like a, a light pole that would create issues so as far as for those that are living on the back half in this area here, uh, depending on the illumination around that. So the resolutions, the only thing that we're looking for is definitely category three type landscaping around the back. Two, again, get up to 20 feet, the building, the structure being 14 feet, but this would give us additional ample space there. So we would be comfortable uh, in the neighborhood. Um, that's really the intent. That's what I came up here to really speak in regards to just Having some privacy between, you know, two totally different uh, abutting uses, you know, it's a neighborhood versus uh, a medical center. So I don't know if that's something that could be put in where it's category three to give us a little bit of privacy back there. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carlisle. Are there any questions? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. And I, I, I just wanted to thank uh, Carolyn White or Carolyn Smith. She was really awesome. She really helped me out a lot. So. Thank you. Mr. Bredon, I assume you have a rebuttal? Well, I, I obviously have no, no, cons, no, no objection and, and totally agree to use Category 3 um, plant material for the double row in the 10-foot landscape buffer adjacent to the, to the residential. Um, there is no lighting that is proposed behind the building. The only lighting is the parking lot, which is 80% um, you know, on the opposite side of the building from the residential. 
Um, we certainly don't have any intention of putting any light poles um, that are within even uh, 80 feet of anybody's uh, property. Now, it, it may come to pass in the future if there are any security issues that they would put a couple of pack lights on mounted on the back of the building that are motion detection only that would only come on if there was something going on at night behind the building it's not that's not intended at this point either but um, so there should not be any um, lighting that would uh, be shining on anybody's windows whatsoever or in anybody's home whatsoever he, he did mention one thing about the uh, the HVAC system. Were there going to be any type of screening on the building, or will they be set more forward so that they're going to be set? They will be set yeah. forward. That's the purpose of the parapet on okay. the front of the right. building is to is to screen the HVAC. So HVAC would not be sitting, it, and the elevations are all you know proper. You, the staff has them. They wouldn't put the HVAC on the back of the building where they would be right. visible to everybody. That's yeah. they'll be up on the Great. on the west side of the building. Are there any questions for Mr. Berdan? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All. Thanks. Uh, at this point, are there any other speakers? We, uh, we have no other speakers for this application. All right, at this point, we'll close the uh, the hearing and open up for discussion amongst the commissioners. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Yes, Mr. Raymond. Um, this is a uh, clearly a site that's not <coughs> no longer susceptible to residential development. Uh, it, uh, a, a medical office is pretty lightweight office use, uh, so it's for the property owner to be able to adequately use his property, that's a good proposal. I think they've gone the distance in trying to be a good neighbor, and, and most recently, uh, Mr. Berdan's comment about going with Category 3 versus 2 and 3. Uh, so I would um, make a motion to approve the application with that modification to Category 3 landscape. Are there any comments before we? Motion made by Commissioner Inman. I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Rosinski. Uh, we're now ready to vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I've abstained from this. I have a working relationship with the owner. Yeah. Excuse me. That's, your, <laughs> that's, your, that's the one you're trying to do earlier, correct? Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to get it in early. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Could, and we want to add the proffer about limiting the hours that the dumpster can be tipped. Okay. <clears throat> Good point. And they offered 7 a.m. to <clears throat> 10 p.m. All right, Mr. Whedon, uh, I think we're now ready to vote with an abstention noted by Mr. Ripley on this agenda item and also uh, Commissioner Weiner and the addition of the proffer limiting the hours that the uh, receptacle can be dumped from 7 to 10. Nine to two, the commission has approved item number five, Monarch Properties, with the uh, update to the tipping of the dumpster hours. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Russo, would you please call the next item? Mr. Chairman, our next uh, application is of Chesapeake Bay Dis uh, Distillery, LLC, an application for a conditional use permit for craft distillery on property located at 437 Virginia Beach Boulevard, District 6 Beach. Thank you again. Welcome. <clears throat> Chairman, uh, for the record again, Eddie Bernard, Virginia Beach Attorney representing Chesapeake Bay Distillery, LLC, as well as Hotline Enterprises, LLC. This is a, um, a request to do an adaptive reuse of the Hotline um, surf shop building. It's not that old of a building at all. It's an attractive building on 17th Street uh, and to um, obtained the first conditional use permit to operate a craft distillery uh, from that building. And the uh, uh, distillery will be a production facility. The applicant has operated for a number of years in Virginia Beach uh, and has outgrown his existing site and will continue to, to uh, manufacture product from that site, but will also be doing uh, some production from this site. Seventy-five percent, actually, of the building will be used for production. That's 3,370 square feet. In addition, there will be a small 500 square foot um, government ABC store, state ABC store, but it's a distiller specific store that only will, um, under very strict regulations, um, sell product that is produced by this distillery. And that's all gone over with you all this morning on your um, 
uh, the ordinance that preceded preceded this. But it is a state. It's a state um, ABC store, and uh, the revenues actually go to the uh, the Commonwealth. They, they do pay for product, uh, but it's only to sell product that is distilled there. Uh, the, in working with the community, there are a number of conditions that are included in your staff recommendation and evaluation for approval that are more restrictive than in your ordinance and in the state code, which were all worked out between my client, who I think has done a phenomenal job, admirable job of, of uh, working with the community, and their letter of support is in your package as well. And one of those um, is the hours of operation for the store, which again, it's just, this, this, unlike some of the information you heard about the ordinance talking about, you know, food preparation, whatever, this is not a restaurant, this is just simply a, a, a small state ABC store to sell product on site. Um, that the, the no live or, um, uh, recorded outdoor entertainment that's that's all perfectly fine you know, have no no issues with that as well which again is, is beyond what's in call for in the ordinance and the bill that this is not a, a, a use that's uh, as I understand it is it could apply for the PPR program so the condition that says no <coughs> PPR um, is perfectly acceptable so all the conditions are acceptable to us and the changes the building are very minor uh, nothing uh, the, of any consequence whatsoever uh, I also want to mention that uh, the the um, neighborhood had a concern about deliveries. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be having deliveries or um, sending out product during um, any hours other than operating hours, which are um, basically uh, nine to five. But there's, they also included something, which again, this is not enforceable. It's really not a part of your conditions, but we just let you know. We're, we don't have night shipments. Things don't go in and out of there at night. Uh, but if there were to be the need on an emergency basis for you know, a, a repair of the air conditioning system or something like that in, in July. I mean, whenever the service people could come and do the repairs, that's when they'll have to come and do the repairs. But beyond that, there will be no activity in the evening as far as um, any products or deliveries to or from the site. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Madon? Thank you. Our next speaker in support is Barbara Clark. Hello, Ms. Clark. Good afternoon, Chairman Hodson and Planning Commission members. My name is Barbara Clark, and I live on the north side of the 400 block of 16th Street. I share my rear property line with those of the commercial properties on the south side of the 400 block of Virginia Beach Boulevard. So I'm sure you can understand my personal concerns regarding redevelopment efforts in this area. I do ask that you have care and consideration when considering these efforts in the future. I'm Secretary of the Resort Beach Civic League, and we are in support of this project with the conditions proposed by planning staff. We are excited about the rebirth of this area as a vibrant district supporting small, locally owned, artisan-type businesses offering unique and superior quality products. We would like to thank the applicant for working so well with us and so much with us to make this a truly successful project. And thank you to planning staff for working with us and making sure we were included in the early stages of the process and for including our position statement in their staff report. Thank you for your kind consideration. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Thanks for taking the time to come down and speak on this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Bradon, I don't believe. Uh, we'll now close the, there any more speakers? Well, um, actually, Mr. R.J. Nutter had signed up to speak in support. Um, I don't. <laughs> he, he previously did. He did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. And that's all the speakers that we have. All right, we'll close it and open up to discussion. Any, anybody like to start? I think it's great. It's a great addition to that corridor of Virginia Beach, and um, I think it, it'll serve Virginia Beach and the resort area well. We spoke of that this morning. It's finally nice Good. to see that that corridor is finally being revived. Uh, I know there's a number of restaurants that are going in and in knowing the owners I know they're going to be very successful restaurants um, we also have I've heard a, a nice coffee shop going in so it's, it's great to see that whole area slowly being turned I think it's been that way for decades so this is this is great anybody else uh, I would just like to echo that I'd also like to uh, thank Miss Clark for taking uh, time out of her day today to come down it's uh, always nice to hear uh, support for these projects. It's also nice to see um, our uh, citizens being involved in in the community. And Ms. Clark, we thank you for your support. Thank you. 
anybody care to make a motion? I'll, I'll move that it be approved. A uh, motion made by Commissioner Bob Thornton. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Oliver. Mr. Whedon, we're now ready to vote. Vote is open. I vote 11 to 0. The commission has approved item number 7, Chesapeake Distillery, LLC. All right, Mr. Russo, I believe we're ready for the next item. Our next uh, application is application number 11, an application of Joseph Hill for a conditional use permit for automobile repair garage paint booth on property located at 1528 Taylor Farm Road, District 3, Rose Hall. Good afternoon, my name is Joseph Hill and uh, I need to ask for a deferral to next month. A lot of curveballs today. <laughs> First day. Um, if the applicant is requesting for a deferral, I guess we'll honor that deferral. Uh, thank you. 30 thank days. Time. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that's how, how, a 30 day deferral? Is that indefinite? indefinite. Indefinite before. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any other speakers on? See the motion. Well, uh, there. Well, there is a speaker in opposition, Carl Eason. Mr. Eason, do you have any opposition to the deferral? I, I don't. Mr. Hill wasn't apprised of the deed restrictions in a prior circuit court and permanent injunction order. I don't believe in trial by ambush. He should be entitled to recess, consider this, meet with my client, and then bring it back for your consideration. Thank you very much. So I would open this up for discussion, but I don't think. <laughs> I need a motion. So just need a motion. I move to defer the matter indefinitely. Motion made by uh, Commissioner Inman, seconded by Ms. Rosinski. Mr. Whedon. Item 11, Joseph Hill, indefinitely. I believe we're ready for that. Okay. Our next uh, application is an application for a variance to a floodplain ordinance and an application for a variance to subdivision regulations on property located at 1076 Sandbridge Road, District 7, Princess Anne. And our first speaker is Steve Barnes. Welcome, Mr. Barnes. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Steve Barnes. I am the applicant. Uh, I understand there's some opposition on this, of not about the application necessarily, but about the traffic. So I'll answer anything I can about the farm market uh, expansion and, and purchase if I can. All right. Uh, any questions for Mr. Barnes? Yeah, where do you get your pies? They're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Trade, I'll trade secret. Pie, a couple, I'll say. Well, I do good. <laughs> good answer. I have a question. Uh, Mr. Thornton. Are there two conditions associated with this application? Are you okay, comfortable? Which conditions are they? Say again. Which conditions are there? There are two. There are two in the workup. Uh, and they are. Uh, <laughs> you have them handy. See, uh, I mean the ones you have concern with. No, no, the no, city. no. I just with the city. Yeah, the yeah, two conditions right. no, they put right. in your application. I thought you meant you had one. No, 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 no. No, 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 no I'm good with that. Not okay. adding any more. I just make I sure you understood the ones that are there. Yeah, I remember. I got okay. it. Okay. I'm fine. Fine. Thank you. Mr. Weiner. Mr. Barnes, I have a question. Yeah. I know you came in front of us not too long ago when we approved the, the stand and all. Are you open for business? No, we only, we only open during the summer months when we have our own product to sell, which okay. is usually May through September. So were you open last summer? Yeah. Okay, just to make sure. Been open eight years there. I'm sorry? Eight years there. Eight years, okay. Okay. I have a question. Have yes. Um, Mr. Barnes, it's my understanding that the um, addition, the enlargement you're making to this present stand that you have isn't going to be selling a new product that's going to bring, increase the traffic that's already coming into your no, market, correct? The only thing 
What happened on this is that the state got involved with the farm market process mm -hmm. and kind of made it made us able to sell more things than the city allowed. So not the expansion is not necessary for that reason. We just need it anyhow, but we will probably add those items that we were allowed to. Okay. But that's not going to increase the traffic there. Mm -hmm. Our market is not a destination. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be on Sanders Road. Okay. And in a location where the traffic on a very good location. Anyway. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're Any other questions for Mr. Barnes? Thank you. I believe the uh, the speaker we're going to hear has some concerns about traffic, which we'll let him speak, and then yes. we'll give you a chance to come back up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, our first speaker in opposition is David Land. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, and <clears throat> Commission members, um, uh, my name is David Land. I live at 1077 Sandbridge Road. Uh, that location is directly across from the existing uh, uh, vegetable stand that's been in existence now there for several years. I forget how many. Uh, I, I did not have any issue with the stand when it was first put up. I still don't necessarily have an issue with the stand. What's happened over, the, over, over time is the congestion that the stand creates has increased uh, tremendously. And as Steve pointed out very candidly, the, you know, he has a good location. He has a high volume business there. And what happens, um, or what's been happening, I don't know where that button is. Here we go. Uh, his stand is about right, right there. And of course, my house is right here. My driveway is right there. On a routine basis, daily, during, between Memorial Day and Labor Day particularly, traffic will back up from the point of entry to his location, clear back, uh -huh. past the entrance to Indian Cove Campground, and around the corner. I've seen that routinely. I mean, I'm, I'm 400 feet from the road. I can see the whole whole thing over on the other side. So anyhow, and the same thing happens uh, going this direction as well. It backs up probably past Colchester. There's a home here, home here. There's two homes here. There's my home here. And the point I'm trying to make is that Indian Cove Campground also has a large volume of traffic. Uh, they have RVs and, and campers and whatnot. But there's never or to my knowledge, I have not seen a backup from their entry point backing up on Sandbridge Road. So with that said, I, I see a, a pretty heavy potential for a safety issue there. And I, I bring it to this commission to, to consider uh, that, that issue with everything that has been going on with Sandbridge Road over the last several years, particularly from Nemo Parkway to, to current. Uh, and the, the fatalities and whatnot, the no shoulders, you name it, it's there. You all know what that is. But I just see this as another possible uh, reality of an accident taking place. And is it, is it avoidable? I don't know. I, I, I think a factor has to do, if I had to pinpoint it, and I'm not an engineer, I think it has to do with exiting and entering because the, block, the, the blockage starts at the entrance getting into the property. And it doesn't happen, as an analogy, it doesn't happen at Indian Cove, which has a lot of traffic as well. And I bring that before this commission to, to have that information available to you before you double the size of an existing structure uh, in an already difficult scenario. Thank you, Mr. Land. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions uh, for Mr. Land? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is it because there's not adequate parking so that the cars are having to wait on the road in order to get in? Several factors play into that. It's, it's the entry point and the exit point ought to be clearer so that people know how to get in and out. It's a gravel driveway. There's no really, mile, uh, there's no really markings to identify which way to go, and everybody starts going out the best way they can. The second factor would be the density of the traffic. It is, it, I, mean, I mean, it's no exaggeration. It is one car right after the next. I think Steve will agree with me on that. Uh, and the other factor might be uh, uh, the speed. The speed plays in this too. Everybody's in a hurry. And, and, and then we're going to come around that corner and they're going to push some of them together at, at, at the least. <laughs> so uh, 
Any other questions? Did that? Yes, sir. Let me see the, the picture that appears in our materials. It's an aerial photograph. The big entrance. Set. Can I? It's on page Kevin. seven. Oh, the right up. It's the aerial right shot there. from our right up there. Is that right there. Okay. Um, you, you can see a uh, sort of a sandy looking area. Is, is, is that the total access point that you're talking about? Uh, that's that the ac access point to the uh, uh, property. It's, it's fairly wide. I mean, extremely wide, actually. It's probably two telephone poles wide. And there's one telephone pole in between them. I, I, don't, know if you can, I don't know if you can pick it up. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's no in, no out. <laughs> I don't know if that would be a, a, a place to assist minimizing the bottleneck or not. I, I'm, I'm not well, suggesting I'm an engineer or anything. <laughs> well, I'm not either, but okay. we're doing the best we can here. <laughs> yes. what, if you, you widen the area that, uh, that was accessible from the road and had more better marking on it, would that alleviate, uh, not entirely alleviate, but alleviate to some degree that's congestion? There was. Um, I, I have no way of answering that question. You, 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 there's drivers, all drivers handle their vehicles differently. And when you have a lot of cars inside the lot or inside the area for parking in front of the stand, you know, 15, 20, and then you have four or five trying to get out, and then you have maybe one or two or three trying to get in. It, it does create some, some sense of congestion. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I hope Steve does well with his business. It's, it's not about the business. Uh, I've run a vegetable stand for years. I don't do it anymore. I know what he's up against. I know what, what he's done. He's got a nice building there. But I have to look at this every day. And of course, my driveway has become a regular turnaround point because I'm the only one that has paved concrete in that in that stretch of road, <laughs> and uh, I I just can't sit there and look at it and see that backlog without bringing it towards to bring it up. I, I wouldn't feel comfortable if down the road if something went sour. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any any other questions for Mr. Land? Uh, no, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Would you like a chance to address his concerns? Address his concerns. I did exactly what the city told me I was supposed to do when I did it. There's two 20 foot driveways, uh, 15 feet apart. And that's what they required me to do, and that's what I did. Uh, so far as the traffic's concerned, San Bridge Road is always a problem. There's always accidents on it, and it's usually about misbehavior. It's not about the traffic. I mean, it's not about the road. It's not about the speed limit. It's somebody's done something wrong. And when that happens on San Bridge Road, it doesn't matter where it is at a busy time, there's going to be a backup. <clears throat> It doesn't matter. A lot of the, a lot of the problems. It's not really a problem, but when there's a you're trying to come in the sand bridge, and there's traffic coming out, you can't make a left turn because of the traffic. It's not about that. It wouldn't matter if you had 12 places to get off and on. You know, it doesn't matter. I agree, sand bridge road is a problem, but it maybe it's the speed limit. You know, and I don't think that would matter. I think you could decrease the speed limit to 35, and somebody's gonna still misbehave. You know, so so I don't know. I don't know how to address that. In, in hearing and what I, don't, I, I hope I am the problem so far as backup because that means that, <laughs> you know I hope I am that but I, I don't think I am go ahead and hearing what he was saying in your your turn lane coming in you have a, a uh, telephone pole basically in the middle w would you be receptive if it may help because he, he mentioned it putting a basically an entrance sign or an exit sign so that well the, people know which side maybe there, to try there are, to the city has zoning ordinances about that I mean they they they, they say I can have a, a number of signs per <clears throat> per square frontage. Is that correct? Yeah. Th those signs are permitted. I mean, it's a directional sign, so it's enter, exit. So those, those would mm -hmm. be permitted for him to... Yeah. I don't know that those would necessarily help, but I know that, that Mr. Land said that that was one issue he saw from his driveway. Some people I'll try to... i be glad to do that. I mean, I don't know that it would help, but right. I'd be glad to do that. Sure. Okay. No Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been in your store a few times, and... Um, one in back and forth and Sam Bridge and I've never seen the the backup as the as Mr. Land testified to happen but it, I guess it has happened from time to time perhaps I'm not disbelieving what he said but but I have been in your store and there's usually only six or eight people in there at a time maybe ten I don't know uh, it's not a lot of people it's not a high traffic destination I mean it looks like to me it's more of a it's a 
typical farmer's market type environment and people are in there buying vegetables and um, that's it. Um, is, is, is that a typical number of people that's in your store? I mean, well, uh, sometimes yeah, I there's probably nobody in there. I mean, I don't know. Well, right, well, nobody there now. Most of the year, there's nobody there anyhow. Uh, we have high volume times. You know, there could be 15 or 20 people there at a time. Then we have the regular time, but you're right. You know, six, ten, sometimes none. Six, eight, sometimes none. But, well, what are the times of day that you're open? We're open 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Do these traffic jams typically happen, I assume, on the weekends? The week, weekdays are not as much of an issue? Weekends more so. Of course, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh -huh. and, and, and they're all weather-related, too. I mean, it can be, you know, it can be the uh, weekend anytime in the middle of the summer and it rain, yeah. the traffic's gone, you know, and it doesn't stop the backup. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, I was going to make a comment on the signage as well because I think one of the things Mr. Lamb was saying was it was a matter of people um, trying to get in and out in the same place and make turns and that's not happening uh, no so um, do you have location on there to put those directional signs that would allow for you know pretty clear specifications well, that this one is out and to the right I so that people are leaving and coming in different engineers places and planning and decide where mm -hmm. to put it where, mm -hmm. where to put where which one where mm -hmm. you know because you have people coming from both directions would you say they and this this one's blocked up and and they can't get out so they got to wait you know we can go out the other driveway now mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying they can use both now if they need to mm -hmm. if you put direction signs there then they can't they're gonna i have think to even wait. if you put direction signs there people will still try. try to do it probably. the shortest yeah, method possible probably. i don't mm -hmm. think that i don't think that would help I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know i don't know the answer to the question sambridge road to sambridge road mm -hmm. but i mean I, it may help to a degree i mean we just don't know uh, well, but i think there's definitely going to be people just wanting to pay attention i'll to be glad to do it like i said okay no problem it would be an attempt to alleviate and see if it works. Yeah. No problem. Mr. Inman, did you also, or is it? I, I took care of the question. Okay. Any other questions, for Mr. Barnes? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. We will now open it for discussion. I'll start. David. Um, I understand Mr. Land's uh, situation. I get to Sandbridge and I just try to get there before 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, to beat the traffic but at the end of the day we're not here for that we're here to vote on what's in front of us and it's the subdivision variance and flood plane variance and that's what we have to think about mm -hmm. any other comments mm -hmm. that's a good point yeah. Jeff I'll just add to that I mean I, I was thinking along the same lines and I think it's pretty clear that mr. Barnes is willing to do anything he could to help the situation so I think um, you know, everyone can be optimistic that going forward we'll look into how to how to make it as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, to kind of second what David's saying that not that's not to say that these issues won't be addressed and hopefully improved, mm -hmm. but that's something that he'll he's willing to take up on his own, independent of this vote. Dr. White, I saw you shaking your head. Do you think the direction signs could be a possible right and aid? Band-Aid's a good way to put it. I mean, um, you're not going to get this totally fixed until Sandbridge Road right. is improved. But um, what we can do is note that this is something that Mr. Barnes is willing to cooperate with um, because this is the floodplain and subdivision variance. You've already heard the use permit. Um, but we'll make sure that goes into the council package, and then we'll work with him to find what's appropriate. Okay. Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. We approve item 13. I'll second it. Motion made by Commissioner Inman, seconded by Commissioner Brockwell. Mr. Whedon? Wiener. I'm, I'm sorry? I thought you, I thought you, I thought you misspoke as to who made the motion. Oh, okay. Did I? Yeah, I'm, that's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> motion made by Commissioner Wiener, seconded by Commissioner Brockwell. <laughs> Both of them. Mike. I vote 11 to 0. The commission has approved item 13, the application of Steve Barnes. Thank you very much for coming down. Mr. Russo, I believe we have one light left today. <clears throat> Our uh, remaining application is of the City of Virginia Beach, an ordinance to adopt amendments to Chapter 4, Princess Anne and Transition Area of the policy document of the Compre Comprehensive Plan 
and an ordinance to adopt amendments to the transition area design guidelines and incorporate by reference into the comprehensive plan. Ms. Phillips? Hello, Ms. Phillips. Hi there. For the record, uh, I'm Gerald Phillips, comprehensive planning coordinator for the city. Uh, between informal session and formal session, we worked uh, to finalize the edits that you discussed. So the first thing I'm going to hand out is a revised requested edit sheet. Okay? This has everything we talked about. And we're going to take this um, document by document. I'm not necessarily going to go through every one, but I don't want to overwhelm you with the paper. Oh, sure. <laughs> While that's coming around, I will also pass out the first of these, and this is the policy document. those are coming around I'll just summarize this request Again, this is a request to by ordinance amend the comprehensive plan by adopting amendments to chapter 4 <coughs> princess Anne and transition area of the policy document including the description and the general issues affecting the development affecting development in the transition area the vision statement development and design general policies open space and recreation, infrastructure, residential development policies, and non-residential development policies. The second is an ordinance to amend the transition area design guidelines and incorporate them by reference into the comprehensive plan pertaining to general physical design principles, residential development, non-residential development, design character of special places in or near the transition area, and an updated trails and open space network map. These amendments are coming to you based on the work that was completed by the city council appointed transition area ITA citizens advisory committee. They were established in March of 2013 and worked diligently between then and November to really get to know the transition area and the issues that have been uh, development issues that have been affecting that area uh, since the last comprehensive plan was adopted or our current one in 2009 and they worked to uh, update the vision statement for the transition area based on the many changes that have occurred in that area over time yet trying to remain true to the original underlying principles of why the transition area was designated in the comprehensive plan in 1991. They have brought forward for your consideration recommendations also specific to the policies for the transition area. This amendment to chapter four decouples what had been a shared set of policy recommendations for both the Princess Anne Commons area and the transition area and presents very specific recommendations just for the transition area. And lastly, um, they worked on the transition area design guidelines, likewise, uh, to update those. They were adopted by City Council in February of 2003 as interim design guidelines at the recommendation of their predecessor committee, which was the Transition Area Technical Advisory Committee. Their recommendations in the form of an update and amendment follow the amendment recommendations for the policy document. So the two documents work seamlessly together. Finally, a map was updated for the transition area open space and trails network. That map originally appeared in the 2003 interim design guidelines and we work with our parks and recreation staff to update that. So those are the three things. The first thing I'd like to start with, um, just a quick run through, is the package of amendments to Chapter 4, 
Princess Anne and transition area of the 2009 comprehensive plan policy document. Those are reflected in what we just passed out. Everything is shown in red. And if you follow along with each of the numbers, one through, I'm sorry, these were stapled. It's so dumb. Uh, one through eight. <coughs> the pages one and two address the, um, the edits that you requested this morning and during your workshop last week. Numbers one through eight on pages one and two. Would you like me to walk through each of those? Mr. Chairman. I don't believe that's necessary. Unless, yeah, may I ask a question? Sir. Um, I think one you want to add to it is on page five. It still refers to the Greenway. It's just a cleaning up. I think you were removing those from the report. It's about midway down. Mm -hmm. You are correct, and I'm sorry I missed that. And that refers back to item number one on page one. That's throughout. Oh, excuse me. It refers to the request to strike all references to the city's green, sea, blue way, and greenway management plan because that plan is uh, has not come forward for adoption yet. And yeah, you might get that done, and we put it into the comp plan. As, as we we can there. take care of that between now and, and council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Page five. Let me see here. The items that you specifically um, requested a change to this morning were number two, referring to page 27, bullet number four. The language now reads, based on the city attorney's advice, for residential development, a maximum average calculated density of no more than one unit per acre of land that may be included in determining allowable dwelling unit or lodging unit density can be earned through demonstrated conformance with the transitionary design guidelines. Okay. The item number five, no, excuse me, number three. Page 27, development and uses, bullet number seven. Non-residential uses should be the word limited with struck and located. Okay, so you made the changes here, but not in here. I did make the changes in here. This is not the right change. Change. Mm -hmm. this is a change. You just need to change that word. This is a document we'll reference when we make our I motion. Because the change is not made in no. the, on page mm -hmm. 27. I mean, yeah. should Can we ask a member of staff to please take the file that's on that flash drive, make a copy of the file that says policy document amendment. It needs to be in color. And please bring those copies here. Thank you. Also, on the, on the uh, correction sheet that we're talking about, item three should, as you stated orally, it should say page 27, not page 26. This one right here, this one. The one I just passed out? That one, yeah. Item three? Item three should say page, one, page 27. It does say page 26. That I just passed out? On, on mine, it says 26. Yeah. Mine says 26. Mine. Does everybody say page 26? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to do the same thing. Yeah. I really can't explain this. We know you have a lot to do. the copy do. machine no, that's, that's during the last two hours. Yeah, yeah. don't worry so. about it. Get it. I'll write it off to Gremlins. Mm -hmm. um, OK. It, um, there were some cases where when we added these, the pagination changed. So we'll note that. Okay. So while we're waiting for that, I also need somebody to please make a copy of that <coughs> file. Of It'll say master edits. 
Thank you. <clears throat> it could be because we were saving them to both the flash drive and the V drive on the computer. So. Okay, next one. Um, number five, page 28. I think I'm going to say please disregard what was just passed out to you um, in terms of the document itself. What you have should read, for residential development, 50% of the gross area of the subject property should be designed to provide a practical balance of both active and passive open space areas, which should each be clearly designated on the development plan. Did we capture that? Yes. Okay. And then there aren't any other changes that we made this morning reflected on one through eight. Okay. In the policy document. I just document. want to make sure I understand that, that yes, we have this list of what the changes are, but the changes are not made on here. Apparently, the copy, copy that I ran be, is okay. not the okay. right copy. Order, we are running order. the right copy. Got it. <laughs> We've had a few versions of this, and I'm sorry. <laughs> one or two, we huh? really crammed when we left that room before we came here. Okay. And the phone kept ringing. Um, so, working on it. Okay. I want to so stop looking at the document, just look that's at the correction page. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. okay. <laughs> On page, uh, excuse me. If you come back to item number six, where it just says page 29. Um, that is actually referring to bullet number two under open space. And it should be reading, for non-residential development, 30% of the gross area of the subject property should be designated as open space, et cetera. All right. So that number six that didn't appear here on page 29 is referencing bullet number two under open space <coughs> and recreation for non-residential development. You, you can refer to page 29 to follow what I'm saying. Yeah, this, thing right. okay. this is number seven. You keep saying yes. item six. Do you have number six yeah, that has a next, page 29? On the next page is what you're talking about. And ours is <laughs> on your seven. front page here. But number 29? six is for residential development. Number seven is for non-residential development on our. May I? Mm -mm. Our page numbers are here. just. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, I, I think the item numbers. Also yeah, I do. <laughs> we'll get through this. I'm sorry, it's I'm barely okay. confusing right. you. It's we tried to throw out every old copy <coughs> as we did that. I knew you had a lot to do okay. when you left this morning. Okay. Thank you. So, <laughs> you do have then Item number seven was the one I was just referring to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There. I don't remember roll. It's there. Okay. Um, everything else should be fine. So what we're waiting for is for you to see the correct print version of this incorporating those. Okay. I do apologize. All right. What's your pleasure, Mr. Chairman? Would you like to wait for that before we go to I the next? I think we can go on. Is everybody comfortable moving on? Mm -hmm. You yeah. comfortable with yes. the correction sheet? Because that's yes. what we're following. Yes. Yes. That's mm -hmm. what will we, be forwarded to council. They will also see the actual. We, we, we're positive you'll get this. And I think, as Jack said earlier, if, if we see this tomorrow and there was a change in this that was added to this correction sheet, we can change it before it goes to council. So. I, I just so, have one little okay. idiosyncrasy. Uh, on uh, item number four, you now we've changed limited to located, I just, but located two major roadways, the two needs to be by or on. On. Yeah. on. on. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. I just saw that. Yeah. Thank you. 
So, Gerald, as this is, these are the edits okay. to the policy document. This isn't the appropriate place to offer that with item number six, page 28, the one that was a bit of a sticking point in informal, that we have some type of maybe A or B illustrative descriptive element to that in the guidelines when we get there. Can I? Did we discuss that this morning? I did. And agree to that? I didn't. I don't know that we agreed to it, but I'm bringing it up again because I still have a concern that we might want to have some type of language in there that makes it clear what we mean by what's the word we added? Practical, Practical. balance and what that looks like. I didn't one of the problems. That. Well, Sorry. one of the problems that we had frequently that we've had frequently in dealing with these is the clarity of language and understanding of what each guideline means that became apparent to me in our workshop and in our informal that the clear because we're kind of under the gun we need to be sure that our language is very clear and that we scrutinize it very carefully and so when we use a term like practical balance I think it's important that we're clear just as we are in adding some zoning ordinance language to P27 above I don't know that I'm saying add zoning ordinance language. I'm just saying maybe in the guidelines, like an A or a B that says, for instance, we're doing that in the matrix. We're providing illustrative so that it's clear what it is we're doing there. Perhaps we could do that here, that the guidelines allow room for that. Sure. I think what I'm hearing you say then is in the design guidelines that are being considered concurrent and a mm -hmm. supplemental to the policy document, right. that's a great place. And that's exactly where we provide examples, be it illustrative a picture mm -hmm. by text mm -hmm. of right. what we mean by that yep mm -hmm. okay so you're saying that should be in the design guidelines not necessarily in the policy I think that's right that's, that's what I'm saying I'm saying that this is a policy document so when we get there that's my concern that there is that we're put I'm putting it on record in her mind that there is some room for illustrative um, text if need be okay. we're, you're fine with that okay, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. We're fine with that. okay we can are we good mm -hmm. meaning we'll take that up when we mm -hmm. do the review in the upcoming months, not today. Right. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Great. Uh, is Robert back? Robert's not back. Okay. Then let's move to we were told we needed to separate these requested edits because there are two ordinances pertaining to two different items. So starting on page three of your edit sheet. That addresses the second ordinance, the transition area design guidelines. I'm almost afraid to pass this out. <laughs> we'll let you know if it's wrong. And I think what I'd like to focus on is show you how we mirrored the language that you requested changes on this morning. And it carries over into the design guidelines. Those were the really key things. There are certainly other edits. This is a tough one because when we made a change here, it bumped it out there and we had to repaginate the whole thing and then we had to go back and change our page numbers on our edit sheet. So. Thanks for your patience. Next. <coughs> okay, so we're on page number three of the requested edits correction sheet pertaining to the transitionary design guidelines. I want to move down to item number three. This is the language that was just inserted into the policy document pertaining to density. Residential development can earn a maximum average calculated density of no more than one unit per acre of land that may be included in determining allowable dwelling unit or lodging uh, through a through demonstrated conformance with the transition area matrix. Okay, well you it, have can earned is striked out on Yeah, so this one is not an updated. Yeah. This is just your luck today, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm guessing the wrong one got printed on the drive. I think you said you had it in two locations. And no, my edit sheet is incorrect. It should say for residential development, a maximum average calculated density, just as it's here in your document, of no more than one unit per acre of land may be included in determining allowable dwelling unit or lodging unit density can be earned through a demonstrated conformance with the transitionary matrix. So the correction sheet needs to be corrected to reflect this language. That language is what we put in the policy document. So section 2.4, page 7 of the guidelines document is correctly worded. We will bring that forward to the edit sheet verbatim. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Thank you. Jim. Okay. I would like to come down to on page four of six. Item number eight, up at the top. Six on your edit sheet. Yeah, eight. Well, eight. these, e even going on to the next one Where? for uh, Where, um, on page seven, it they don't match either. The definition. Page 7, uh, Section 2.4, A. Item number 4. Okay, page 7, Development and Uses. So, page 7 of the guidelines document. We are on item number 4, four. Item four on yes. the edit sheet where it says page 7, Section 2.4, A. Development and Uses. The, the, the write ups don't match on that one either. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't the definition mind. of active yeah. open yeah. space mm -hmm. is found in section 4.1. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. But, not but of you this, said of this, of this document, document on the correction sheet, and it it's, oh, yeah, it doesn't say that on the. I need to. What is in okay. here in the document is correct. Of this document is correct. Of this, this document, document is not. I have to. Uh, so okay. is found mm -hmm. in paragraph. Right. Our section 4.1 period, that's the end of it. Correct. Of this document. Correct. We were going back and forth. We were working out the edit sheets, making the corrections, making sure we came back and did this. We okay. didn't come back and correct the edit sheet. We had three screens going. Okay. okay. All right. Page seven. We had to change the numeration. For everything below that, 2.4A to 2.4B, so it all flows. Okay. okay. So that's what five, six, and seven are all about. Everybody follow that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I think the page number is all right. So. Okay? On your edit sheet, item number eight, it should say page number eight. It does. Mine says page number oh, nine. Oh, nine. No, it says nine. Development and Uses, right. section 2.6. This is a change that you made this morning. Non residential uses should be located, I did it there, at <laughs> major <laughs> roadway intersection. Should be intersections or if as part of a mixed use development plan of development located at the entrance to the neighborhood or interior to the neighborhood around a central green or open space okay, okay? Mm -hmm. that one's good all right um the next item number nine just combined what had been 3.5 and 3.5 a into one paragraph Okay. All right, move down on your edit sheet, page four of six, to item number 12. 
special place. This is referring to page 17 of your document. I should say 4.0, special place. This is Mr. Brockwell's suggestion this morning. <clears throat> I hope I attributed that correctly. Mr. Thornton's. Ms. Thornton, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. When developing in proximity to designated special place, for example, these places, design elements should be incorporated that are, and we struck prevalent, and we inserted contextually relevant in that place to ensure compatibility. Works. Next item, number 13. This addresses what you spoke of this morning. Gerald, do you want quick typo things now or when you're doing the comp plan? I think you said you wanted them at some other point in time. But when you say contextually relevant, you've already said you incorporated that are contextually relevant to, not in. Thank you. Now's the time for that one. Okay. Um, page 25, Open Space and Recreation, Section 5.1. The language reads, for residential development, 50% of the gross, and we struck out developable area of the subject property, that's the language you added this morning, should be designed to provide a practical balance of both active and passive open space which should each be clearly designated on the development plan. So that's the same language that's in the policy document. And Robert, while you were out, we spoke about providing some examples of what that <coughs> looks like in the design guideline. Okay? okay. Examples. Okay. Uh, number 14 in section 5.2 did the same thing. For non-residential development, 30% of the struck developable inserted gross area of the subject property. <coughs> okay. That's on page 27. I couldn't even staple these correctly, could I? <laughs> no, <laughs> not in the top left corner. Okay. Um, Item number 15 on page 28, section 5.4 of your document. We struck the reference to Green Sea Blue Way and Greenway Management Plan. Page 28, section 5.4. I'd like to move down <coughs> to item 19 because we didn't make any other changes that we didn't that we discussed this morning. Item number 19, you have the transition area design matrix. You have copies of that this morning. I have extra copies if anybody needs to see that. It's the same thing we handed out this morning. We've added comment now, number 19, in more detail, <clears throat> that the transitionary design matrix is being amended on page one at all or subsequent to incorporate the revised description of maximum average calculated density and developable area to be consistent with the policy document and the transitionary design guidelines as per the advice of the city attorney. And I spelled advice wrong, didn't I? Everybody okay with that? That's the that's the red up at the top that was added. That's the same language, Bill's language, that's in the policy document and the transitionary design guidelines that you got this morning. Are we going to talk further about the design matrix before we finish? Is a separate item or? Well, it's, it's part of the design guidelines. It's an appendix mm -hmm. of the design guidelines. So this is item number two, ordinance number two, dealing with the design guidelines. Okay, I'll so. be more direct about it. We talked about uh, Dr. White is going to do a demonstration example of how the matrix would work. 
Uh, I'm not saying you should have had it done by now. I'm not raising that. Uh, I'm saying, are we going to see that before council sees it? I think it's in here. It's, it's done. Oh, you did it. Yes, Amazing. <laughs> Simply. <laughs> Oh, we don't. I don't oh, think we, we made don't copies of that know, we before we came over. I'm sorry. We don't have. <laughs> okay. You want to do that? And while he's doing that, come down to bullet number two under 19. We revised the density formula. I use the word summation in former sections A through E at the bottom of page one. Those edits are shown in red and provided examples. Okay. And on pages two through seven, we inserted from zero to one versus zero or one to emphasize that when staff is using this matrix to do an evaluation, a score of from zero to one, which is what's always been intended, not zero or one, will be assigned. It's a, it's a, it's a range. So it might be a point eight if Robert reviews it and it might be a point seven if Steven reviews it. Zero to one. Okay. That doesn't change anything. Well that one's not in literal. Zero to some number. No. I mean you it what we're trying to say is it's not just zero or one. It's zero up to, to I guess scale. you should say scale. and including one. Mm -hmm. Up to and including I mean, it's one. Not, uh, it's not zero or one, it's zero all the way up, up through through one. Ten. Two one. Zero to one. One's it? One. How do you go from zero to one? Point. Not a whole lot. You of get a point. You get a point for each of these items. So you could get a point eight for that item, or you could get a one, or you could get a one's zero. One's most you can get. Correct. Zero is the least you can get. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's so a subjective review. So zero through one. Zero through one is what it should say. <laughs> and it should say, can be assigned by the planner completing the matrix, or who completes. Well, we're the only ones that do. No, no, it's a typo. Where? Can be assigned oh. by the planner completed. It should be who or completing. completing. So in that bullet point two, completing. Cheryl. Yes, I got it. Okay. Completing the matrix. Mm -hmm. And you're suggesting that it should be zero through one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> zero through <coughs> one. Oh, no, I like two. <laughs> And as long as you're making those little changes, do you want to go ahead and use the word on, on page four, uh, item number four of the uh, policy document, document? We had discussed using located on, but you've used yeah. located at yeah. mm -hmm. uh, in the other. So I would just recommend using the same okay. mm -hmm. we'll verbiage, located at. <coughs> Got that. Thank you. Well, it's a little bit different, not to be picky. On a roadway is on a roadway, but you can only be at an intersection. You can't be on an intersection. Mm. <laughs> right. You know, you're at, a, you're at an intersection or you're not. You're on a road, but you can be on any part of the road. I think you got it. I think you can on use on, it. on on both in both yeah. places. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you could use on on both places, but at an intersection is in what it says. It. it says at an intersection. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're on an intersection, I guess that would be. Let's okay. go with at. Mm -hmm. At for both. Okay. Yeah, because it's. Oh yeah, at, at. I'll make at, that consistent. Gotcha. That is intersection as well. Stephen, do you have that up? Four. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. You're working on. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize they worked up intersection. Email. It's just that we're trying to get Sorry, consistency. I didn't get a chance to more. check those. Okay. Yeah, that's intersection. Okay, and. Um, <laughs> So that's the Classic. that's the matrix, and Stephen was going to show you how he added some examples of that, and we'll come back to that. The last items, pages five through six, items on your edit sheet number twenty through twenty-three. Robert rolled through these this morning. They're really up at the front of the document, and. These are what we call staff housekeeping edits. He spoke about those this morning to you. They were not edits that you requested at your workshop. They were Robert going back in and giving this one more once over for readability and clarity. So I just move these to the bottom and you can follow along here if you'd like. Um, have those copies in me? Thank 
afraid to pass that out. Can I see it? <laughs> I really want to check what, before you pass it out. Because you could be working off of the wrong file place. I've got one question, which I hope is my last one. You, you refer to <laughs> the green second. line. Is there such a thing as a green line? Is that still vernacular that's yes. current? Yes, yes sir. Okay. It's in the comprehensive Absolutely. plan. Absolutely. Yes. We need to be official. Yes. 1979. Still real. Okay. I think this is the right word. Okay. <laughs> All right, so that one's going to place this one. This one's trash. Correct. But she's not correct. Revise. 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 Revision. 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 Four. Four. If you could, as he's passing that out, okay. right on the top this of that, received good. during formal session on January 14th, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> I do put that. Here we go. Sorry, Jack. There's not enough. Thank you, Robert. I'm going to do the same. All right. All right. Thank you for your patience. On, on page five, the the uh, green sea blue waves management plan is still on here. However, if we start with page with item number two <laughs> on page one of your edit sheet, and you go to page twenty seven, bullet number four. You've got the normal crossed off here, but you've got the up two crossed off on the correction sheet. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh my I mean, I say what we we reference is is your correction, correction sheet, sheet with and yeah. and we've made some notes. At least I have some simple ones as to what needs to be corrected on the correction sheet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And nice. Bill, I'm, I think you mentioned earlier today when we we're in there that. When a, if and when a motion is made on this today, that we need to reference this sheet? Well, you need to reference just something, whichever sheet it is, that it, that contains the material that you are actually recommending. So I'm not sure if it's just going to be by reference to one particular of the handouts, it, yeah. unless it's the requested edits correction sheet from January 14th, 2015. Right. Planning Commission in formal session. If those are the only changes that you're that um, you are recommending, then that would be sufficient. But if any more are made during the course of your deliberations, then of course you'd have to, you know, mention those as well. But we've all noticed that there is a few corrections that need to be made on the correction sheet. So if we re reference this sheet, do we also have to go through and reference each correction? on the correction sheet. We do. Well, if this is the only differences that you uh, want to, you're saying corrections there, there are some, to this. There's a couple mistakes that are on. Right. You would just have to reference this and whatever Correct. additional Edit. corrections to this you make. Okay. I mean, it's okay. it's important that, that the city council is aware of everything that you're recommending. And of course, the, pl the uh, planning department will have the time between now and the right. city council to to get everything correct, right. which is uh, s something that you know is pretty much impossible between the morning right. session and. But yeah, if you may reference this sheet and any corrections to this sheet, then I think we'll be okay. Okay, great. Well, and I've made those Chair, notes, and we'll go Mr. over Chair, which I, ones you have. I mean, this whole thing has changed. Yeah. since the, the the whole thing these corrections are only the things that were made after we had the informal so this has got to be addressed yeah. uh, in its entirety also no no mm -hmm. this is the same sheet you got this morning and I added to it your discussion from this morning this is the plan that's coming before us 
to make the decision to move forward with. These are just corrections to the plan that's coming before right. and what So we have to address both the, the document, the policy, and the design guidelines in addition to these. These address the policy document and the design guidelines. And what Bill is saying is if you act on this correction sheet with the edits we've just made, that's the appropriate action to take today. Uh, I, I know what so you're saying. So that doesn't mean we've made any not action? Yes. No, yeah. not I'm community. sorry. So right. What Jan, I think, is saying, and I don't know me to step in, but I think what you're saying is there are additional changes that have been made to this document that are not reflected Correct. on this correction sheet. Okay, got so it. So if we just yeah. reference this, then we're missing all, all the other corrections. Correct. Right, right. You, you need to have the base document, which is what you would be, you know, starting with, and then the corrections... The, on this sheet, and then the corrections the to the corrections. Correction. Mm -hmm. So right. this document, in addition to the Correct corrections thing. made at the informal, in addition to the corrections made at the formal. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you say this document, you you have to be very careful and do it, that you can identify that document. Right, but we've got to start by identifying the design guidelines and the policy. Right. right. You got your original step, which mm -hmm. was what you got in your packet. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, your packet showed all of the proposed recommendations uh, coming from the committee. The correction sheet reflects your discussion from the January 5th workshop and today. Right. Correct. I hear what you're saying. I think I've figured out what the problem is. I have saved my edits to the document to the V drive, which is an internal drive that we use that we can access supposedly anywhere in any building, but we are not able to access that in this room for some reason. And it is not on the flash drive we were using, which is what the copies were made of. I apologize. If we can figure out how to access this V drive, you can see the document. It's supposed okay. to be a all, all accessible sure. drive I'd, anywhere. I'd like to ask a question of Jack. Uh, this is starting to get painful and it seems to me like we're trying to hurry up and jam 10 pounds of something in a three pound bag without really processing it like we should is there any harm done if we put this on the February agenda and give her a chance to really get this cleaned up and, and maybe you know heaven forbid we have another work session to come down here and read it I mean this is serious stuff and there's disconnect between the computer printouts. I know city council wants it back by time certain, but if we held, if we had this on our February agenda, would we satisfy their requirement? If we expedite it to the next available council meeting, I think we will. Okay. But you can do That's that. Whoa, 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 whoa. If, if I can just make something really clear, we just made these edits to this document. <coughs> it is accessible on the V drive. If somebody can print that off or put it on a flash drive from somewhere else besides this room, you can look at it today. There are no other changes to be made to the document. Respectfully, I don't see what waiting a month when we just made these changes. Well, I'd, but, I'd just open that up for discussion. Okay. I think we can make the corrections. I think we have a pretty good sense of collectively of what the changes are, and it's really a clerical exercise to get it to that point. I think from what Bill has suggested, we reference <clears throat> the documents uh, and the corrections uh, and move forward with that. We can take care of between now and then uh, getting the actual uh, clerical and pagination changes done, which won't have any substantive uh, differences from what you're comfortable with. Well, one thing Bill said this morning that was comforting is that if we do this and we find out that there's some gaps in it, we've got the rest of the year working well, you do. on the comp plan you do. to fix it under that scenario. You do. Well, and I might add to that, Jeff. You know, we've, we've got our understanding and seeming consensus on the point of all of this. I think pretty well hashed out. It's the formality that isn't hashed out. So in the interim, you know, one of the reasons why some people want this done now is so that it can be used to guide development in the meantime. I believe we can still accomplish that in the meantime 
if these are done the way we're discussing, if that procedure that Jack has described is followed, as an added um, peace of mind, we know that we can operate based on the understanding in the meantime while we're doing the comp plan updates. I, I don't disagree with you, but I think that will be shown when we have a vote on this because some some commissioners, I, I'm not speaking for me, may, may not be comfortable. I, I don't know. So we haven't really gone there yet, but um, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see that when we when we vote on this. Ron, did you want to say something a second ago? I thought... No, I, I was, you know, I was thinking that uh, if Jack, if she has it and she can print it, if you wanted to recess for a few minutes and print it, but if you want to, you know, I think the way what you outlined would probably work as well. That's why I didn't speak up. But that's another way to do it. I, I was also going to re recommend that we recess for a few minutes and give them the opportunity to. I just don't feel we're comfortable sending it to council when they've already sent it back to us, you know, saying, hey, we really want you guys to look at this and that we're not real, you know, to make sure that we are understanding whatever we're going to send back. Uh, is what we think we're sending back. Would, it, would a five-minute break give you enough time, Ms. Phillips? Yeah. That too. Five minutes would be great. Why don't we just take a quick five-minute break, grab a drink of water, and hit the restroom if you want. We'll be right back.
patients, but this is extremely important that we get it right, and I'd rather make sure today that we have it right before we walk out of here. So, Cheryl is on the phone, <laughs> which I didn't realize. She's on the phone. What we just did, the revision sheet that we were going over that needed some revisions to the revision sheet, we had them handwritten in, so everybody now has a copy of the exact same document that has all the changes to the revision sheet that we just brought up in the last hour or so. So when we go through, and I don't believe we need to go through these, if you just thumb through them and, and make sure you're okay with what's there because it's what we all just spoke about. Um, I think this should get us to where we need to be on this document. I, I, would, I do want to make a, a comment about the page numbers that have been put on here is they made a comment this morning that sometime when they insert the pictures it that it changes the page numbers on that. So once they actually get it reprinted, they may do to really look at are, are the page numbers actually correlating to the right page number. And that may be why these two page 26 and 27, sure 28 and 29 have gotten off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Gerald wanted to come She's back. on the phone I with somebody. I also would like it if we can get in our hands before it goes to council the absolute final printed yeah, good point. to yeah. look at. I agree. While we're waiting, does anybody else have any? We'll go ahead and do some open discussion before our open discussion. <laughs> Public here. <Yeah. laughs> That wasn't a personal phone call. I was just trying to figure out the status of the document copies. Yes, sir. Your week will be a lot easier after today. So this will be the, today. This is Wednesday, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're um, picking up a collection of for brewery money for you. We're going to get that distillery Try open tonight. Craft brewery samples. While you're on the phone, we were just talking about what we, we just went over. How we basically made the correction sheet, so everybody's now looking at the exact same document. Uh, we all didn't have individual notes on it, so I don't feel unless anybody up here thinks that we should go through these individually again. Is everybody okay yeah. with these? Okay. I believe at this point, um, do you have anything else to add, Cheryl? No. No. All right. Thank you for your patience. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm prepared to make a motion. Well, let's see. Is, um, are there any other speakers today? I don't think Gerald heard Mike reiterate that between the time we yeah. vote on this and the time this goes to council, if you could possibly get us the documents Correct. that are going to council Absolutely. so beside our fireplace at night we can go through and read it and study it because, it, you know, it's important that they get something that's ready to approve. Absolutely. You will have those before you get home. Well, that's I, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Don't rush. <laughs> I won't rush. Okay. Right. Thank you. I, I'd like to just mention something if I could. Um, I know this is a big year coming up with the train, with the comp comprehensive plan coming in. This probably doesn't happen all the time, the, these big of addendums that we're looking at right now. And thank you very much, by the way. Um, Gerald was very nice to sit down with D and I for about a couple hours about a month ago and went through this whole thing. It was really interesting. But um, I do like to say we do after we get done with the comprehensive plan and into the next couple of years and we get something like this this big of a denim, if we could make it to where we could get about three or four people on, on the planning commission to be part of it, just so you know, because I think then we could come back because. I, can, I can't say this for too much longer. I'm still new at this. I've been doing it for a year. And last April, when you came to us with these, with the briefing, phew, it blew through right in my head. I didn't, I didn't know what it was. If I would have known more, I would have said, hey, I want to come to some meetings and learn more about it. But in the future, if we just maybe, we can pull like four or five of us aside and go to a couple meetings. So when it comes back to us, we can maybe monthly, we can come back to the planning commission and brief everybody. I think you just nominated yourself for whatever <laughs> yeah. comes up in the future. Be happy to, however you want to approach We're this. Happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, when, great when point. we do, when at the end of this year, when we finish the work on the comp plan, I would like to recommend that when we have that meeting in public, that we've got the stuff done. Oh, you Because if we had a room full of people out here today with other cases behind you, uh, that would have not been good. No. 
So we can work that through. And when are we shooting to finish that up? By the end of the year, 2015, November time frame? Uh, we are going to receive your direction on that in February after we give you the preliminary report. <laughs> Uh, our initial schedule had November coming to council. Uh, I think it may be January. Okay. Okay. Well, just sure. We need time to process. This. Absolutely, and, and, and it will be have, bulletproof. And we have to do a few workshops. That's fine too. Yes, you will have some workshops. Okay. Okay. I have one question before I make a motion. Was these transition area design guidelines? Did we receive them at the same time as the January fifth at the workshop? Right, that date should say 2015 on the bottom. Mm -hmm. it, it says city of 2014 on that. Right, it should say 2015. Okay. Right. Well, I'm, I'm okay. concerned. When did we receive? You received first? those today as a handout. You initially received them in November, and then you received them again for this packet and the cover is the cover has been changed which is one of the edits that you just approved on your correction sheet mm -hmm. we, did, we did not receive it at the january 5 workshop is that uh, had, the cover on it. had the original cover on it yeah. right one of your edits is to change the cover okay and the date should be 2015 because you're receiving it today Would you like to? Uh, I, I just in, in, able, in, in order to be able to identify it in the in the motion, I was tr I know we have modified it some today because it's in the correction sheet. So, That's what. So you... I'm going to refer to to the uh, policy changes as the document received on January 5th as edited at that today. time. Correct. And I was trying to confirm when we received the transition area design guidelines first. Looking like that, with that cover on it, you received it this morning. I don't. I don't think I care about the cover. I think I care about the content. I know, but I'm just saying that's yeah. how I differentiate between the one you received on the fifth, which had the original cover. Okay. So all right. This is the one that you received this morning. Okay. Mr. Inman, um, there is a transition area matrix too that would be yes. part of the design guidelines I wanted yes. to make sure you had that right. that's an appendix that's uh, appendix a I, ha I handed that out this morning the appendix to the guidelines all right what? I handed it out this morning during informal session it looks like this all right I'll, I'll reference that all it looks like this okay. and, and I got it okay. but all of this was handed out this morning that's the best way to yes. identify it it's, it's dated January 5th but they were Thank all handed out today okay right the the matrix that we got today actually has today's date on it that that's is that what you have that mike in your yes. left hand okay I got january 13. january 13. yeah that's well that's that's yesterday yesterday, that was yesterday. she wants you to reference that all out. we handed that out this morning okay. it was edited last night and that's an addendum but we do know <coughs> that Stephen has made changes to this. But those changes are listed in the errata sheet. Okay. Correct. That's right. I'm sorry. Right. They That's are correct. listed in your errata sheet. Good enough. Okay. That is labeled handed out after recess during <coughs> formal session 1 14 15. Are there any other discussion? Uh, I, I make a motion that we. Uh, accept and approve the revisions to the 2009 comprehensive plan policy document for chapter 4 Princess Anne and, and the transition area which was received this morning in our informal session along with the transition area design guidelines which were received this morning in our informal session and the transition area matrix, which is an appendix to the guidelines which we received this morning, and as amended by the edits and correction sheet dated January 14, handed out 
uh, after the formal session recess today. Motion made by Commissioner Inman. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brockwell. Ready to vote? May I have a discussion? Can I ask a, a point? There, we had some resolutions that were in here too. Is that something that has to be acted on? I know the resolutions were, are actually for council. Okay. That's right. their adoption of those. And they'll have to be amended too with dates and things as we go forward. Okay. Right. The is open. <clears throat> there we go. All right, vote with 11 0. Shoot. Oh, this is tough. Yeah. The. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Phillips, Robert, um, I know you guys have spent a tremendous amount of time on this. Um, and I know when you left this morning, you had a huge task to try to get all this done before, you know, the, the meeting today. So I, 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 I feel for you today. Um, I also know there were a number of other people that worked on this with you. I know um, our new commissioner, Karen, you worked a lot of hours on this. I believe, uh, was it Diane? Um, Diana Hicks. Yeah, she. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I, I don't want to miss some of the others, but all I know. All the members of the committee. All the members. All the members, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you all for your hard work on this, and uh, thanks to everybody's patience for letting us get, get through this today. And this so. is not how I like to do business. These kinds of, you didn't have it perfect when you got it. And I apologize, that falls below my standards. So going got, forward, that won't happen again. We got through it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further business today? If none, on behalf of my fellow commissioners, I thank everyone for attending today. <laughs> thank the planning department for their hard work and Jack for your direction. And our attorneys for keeping us straight today. And we all got through our first meeting of 2015. That's awesome. Yay. Yay. Thanks. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>